If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I've done a lot of content, but more recently I've done shorts, right? And I've uploaded this to various platforms, one of which is IG, as you guys know. And um, during that short, of course, you know, you don't place the whole full video, you cut it to a certain extent so that it can be in the realms of a short. And, you know, even with the information that was in a sense given or that was able to be heard, you still have people that wanted to deflect say that I was pulling the victim card and all these other things. Like I said, you'll see the comments directly in front of you as the video plays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the full video, let you guys hear it, let you guys also read the comments and um, then I'll give a response. Was this overwhelming support for Donald Trump in the 2020 election a vote for Trump or was it a vote against Biden Harris with the emphasis on Harris? Well, I think that it's really the maintenance of the status quo is what, is what it showed. Yeah. So white women have been voting, narrow majorities of white women or pluralities of white women have been voting for Republican candidates for the better part of 70 years. And I think one of the important things that we can hopefully take away from this election is that these are longstanding patterns that are unlikely to change. And so this idea that Molly mentioned earlier, that kind of women, white women are the better angels of, of white people. And because we experience sexism and misogyny, which we do, that we somehow are more aligned or more empathic towards the oppression that people of color and particularly black Americans experience in this country. Like that has been routinely discredited at every point throughout history. Not only have white women and majorities of white women voted Republican for the better part of 70 years, white women have taken an active role in the maintenance of white supremacy. And that has not changed over, over the course of generations. And so we still see those legacies today, whether it's Amy Cooper or the permit patties or right. white women that have weaponized their identities um, against especially black men who threaten their privilege. These are long-standing entrenched patterns. Now, the one point that Rachel just mentioned that I do think is worthwhile paying attention to and that I do think sort of this exit poll data obscures is that I think one incorrect takeaway from this election is that therefore we just wash our hands and say, okay, we're no longer speaking to white women. Like they're going to do what they're going to do politically. Their interests are their interests and there's no point. And actually I think that's where kind of delving into the subgroups of white women and particularly looking at those white college educated women who did appear to swing this election where there has been real infrastructure built post 2016 that is doing real organizing in communities. That's not just swing Looping in with some ads in the weeks before the election, but that is really using white women's networks in those communities to organize, that does appear to make a difference. And not only that, I think we have to look at the fact that for the better part of 40 years, we have had a vast right wing um, organizing machine in this country that has explicitly targeted white women. And so the notion that kind of white women are just going to do this I, I think, you know, in a country that's so rooted in white supremacy, it probably is the default position. But it yeah. doesn't mean that we don't organize. And I think one of the takeaways is that we have to look at where that organizing happened and the difference that it made. And there are examples of that. And you were able to literally hear a Caucasian woman state how it is that her own, her own have been voting for years how it is that they've been side by side even bill burr he did a stand-up talking about this stating that hey if uh their men have been doing all of these negative atrocities you guys need to be taking the blame and sitting there right next to the men because you were enabling and supporting them uh to do these atrocities for the longest times possible 
But the moment in time that it comes to take responsibility, magically they want to walk off and act like they ain't had nothing to do with it. They just want to make it seem like, oh, it was just the men doing it, that we didn't have no control. Yes, they did. <laughs> yes, they did. And that's why I like videos like this, because you will have the uh, the rare instance in which they will honestly tell the truth like nobody else can tell the truth about them because they know themselves. They realistically know their history. They keep tabs. They got books. They got statistics. But it's amazing to me looking at the comments that you have so many people wanting to say so many things, which is completely ridiculous, right? So one of the comments that is above uh, you got Urban Genius up there, right? Talking about just delete this, please. And as you were able to hear, why would I delete it? This is a Caucasian woman telling the truth. She is specifically speaking on a panel. Now, when I made the clip, I wanted to make the focal point directly about her because she is the main reason why I am doing the video. She is the main reason, you know, why everybody else on the panel was pretty much quiet consistently nobody interrupted her nobody was like oh but this but it wasn't none of that because everything that she stated is factually based right so then later on after i gave a response he came back and stated you're weak and let caucasian people's mind games hold you back stop complaining and start working now the the most interesting thing about my original response was that I told him that, hey, if you don't like the content that is directly on his IG page, you are more than welcome and free to block yourself from my IG page so that you won't see any content that I uploaded so that it won't show up in your feed. So because I gave that response, he then decided to state that I'm weak, which is crazy because I want people to understand when I make these shorts, I'm not specifically talking in these shorts. If there is audio for you to hear, I'm not talking in these shorts. I'm letting the short, I'm letting what it is speak for itself. So then later on, he stated, he was like, if you posted this, which I'm not sure why you would have to say that if I'm specifically telling you that this is my page, right? It was like, if you posted this, you're weak again. This is weakness. You begging uh, Caucasian peoples to help you is pathetic. Where in the video, like I said before, the portions of the clip that I posted, where in that am I specifically stating that I am asking for any type of help? This is what I'm talking about when people want to put up a narrative because they don't have anything else to go off of. My voice is not in there. <laughs> The main thing that I stated on the image of the short is that uh, she spoke the truth, but did people listen? That's it. That's all I stated. <laughs> so the next person, right? Disney dad for life. We already know who this is. He said, what a bunch of BS. And I'm like, I guess so, because um, this is one of your women stating facts. This is one of your women stating facts. So I, I guess you would sit up to say that it's BS because it's also putting uh, the whole other spectrum of the male side of your species um, up for, you know, responsibility. And, uh, you know, you got to you got to you got to take that. It is what it is. Right. So then you got big text. He was like, this is silly and ignorant. I don't see what's silly and ignorant about it. If this woman is literally telling the truth, what is silly and ignorant? You can't say, oh, don't focus on the past because the past is going to forever stay consistent if people are still doing and contributing to the exact same things as what made the past the past. Right. But like I said before, it is what it is. And then we got another Caucasian right at the bottom said this was edited well. Right. Because he, he wanted to complain about the tail end where she was stating, um, you know, black men. He wanted to make it seem as though I wanted to specifically edit that in a way for her to basically say black men. So, again, let me matter of fact, let me let me just play the short. Let me let me just play what it is that they're complaining about real quick. Right. The white women have been voting 
narrow majorities of white women or pluralities of white women have been voting for Republican candidates for the better part of 70 years. These are longstanding patterns that are unlikely to change. Because we experience sexism and misogyny, which we do, that we somehow are more aligned or more empathic towards the oppression that people of color and particularly black Americans experience in this country. Like that has been routinely discredited at every point throughout history. Not only have white women and majorities of white women voted Republican for the better part of 70 years, white women have taken active role in the maintenance of white supremacy. And that has not changed over, over the course of generations. And so we still see those legacies today, whether it's Amy Cooper or the permit patties or white women that have weaponized their identities um, against especially black men who so again, if you you know want to make a short a short, you you have to in a sense edit it. You can't have a lengthy video and then you want to sit up there and try to call it you know a short. But like I said, uh, nothing up there that she stated uh, was a lie. She is one hundred percent about that. She's also old enough to know about these things because she more than likely saw her mother she saw her grandmother she saw other women that looked like her in her community and what it is that they were doing how it is that they were talking the issues that they faced and they wanted to vote on they wanted to you know make important and you know push to the side and all this other type of stuff but like i said you got you got a variety of individuals out here that whenever you put up information like this, they always want to deflect like, oh, get up, get get out of the past. You weren't there. No, 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 no. Nobody that, you know, was there or or a part of that. That's not your history. Focus on today. Focus on the now. And then when you focus on today and the now and you still list some of those exact same things, then they try to say, oh, stop trying to make yourself a victim. Um, everybody goes through this. That's just human beings being human. Be like I said, they, they try to all lives the whole situation they try to say all colors matter when realistically that's that's that has never been the case that has never been the case the real the 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 only time that in a sense everybody mattered is the moment in time that black people stated that they matter that's when everybody else wanted to jump on the bandwagon and then wanted to come up with their own version of whatever it is like i said notice how a lot of those groups that were real boisterous Right. And they were all talking like, oh, yeah, this is this is the group and and we're for everybody. No, no, no. This this is our group and we're specifically for our people. And notice how a lot of those groups, they not vocal. Why they not protesting? Why they not out here uh, marching still to this day? Why they not talking about everybody's issues? And this is what I tell people. You got to pay very close attention to a lot of the things that are specifically out here that are put in place. Because a lot of those groups were put in place in order to go against the original narrative. In order to say that, oh, you can't just say that you matter. What about everybody else? When realistically, everybody else didn't even care about everybody else. It wasn't up until somebody stood up and say that I matter, that everybody else wanted to say like, oh, I'm important too. I matter too. I matter too. <laughs> But, hey, it is what it is. Like I said, I'm just going to continue placing content and showcasing the proof of the things that, you know, I'm specifically talking about. And, you know, people are free to, to disagree directly in the comments section. But 